Y'all ready for the word? Yes. yes. I don't know if you Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you sure you want this word this morning? Yes. God just been stirring something inside me. Like I said, I heard everybody <coughs> going through these things. <laughs> and uh, man, it's a, uh, I better go with my first title. I'll tell you the other title <laughs> and after, after we get down to it so you get it uh, later on. So somebody don't get offended right off the of bat and turn me off. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will talk to you about standing still. We sung the song, but so many times we don't know how to stand still and just let God take care of something. Everybody wants to mix their hands into situations. We talked about it last week and how Abraham and uh, Sarah, they had a promise of God. They had a promise of this great child, Isaac. But when it didn't manifest in the timing that they wanted, then all of a sudden they got their hands involved and said, well, maybe you just need to go over here and lay with your maidservant. And all of a sudden they created an Ishmael. And so many times in life, we're walking around hooked up with an Ishmael when God promised you an Isaac. Somebody, you need to realize this. Ishmael, the Bible says that God loved Ishmael, but here's the thing. Ishmael is not your promise. Isaac is your promise. And Ishmael is created when God's people put their hands and try to manipulate or make God do something. They think, we think so many times, I mean, in our own minds, we know we can't make God do anything, but at the same time, we get to dipping into it and trying to figure it out, and we try to figure out, we get a word from the Lord, or God speaks something to us or something. Next thing we know, we're trying to get our fingers involved. Well, maybe God actually meant this, and we try to justify things and, rattle, uh, and rationalize things, when all along, God's just saying one word to us today, church. You need to just shut up. That was my first title and I decided not to do. <laughs> you need to shut up and just back off and see the hand of God. God wants to touch your life. He wants to touch you right where you're at. And but see, here's the problem. is Some of you sitting here under the, my voice right now and you're saying, but I ain't worthy. I'm not done this right. I'm not done that right. Well, I want to tell you that right off the bat, get that out of your mind because I'll, I'll break the news to you. Is everybody ready? This yes. is great revelation right here. You're exactly right. You ain't worthy. That's right. You ain't. Right. Neither am I. None of us are worthy. That's right. But God still, through His Son Jesus, made us worthy through the blood of Jesus. Not of our own righteousness. In other words, not of all the good things we've done or the bad things we've done. But because of Jesus, yes. we have access to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and help in a time of need. Yes. Amen. Amen. How many knows that some of y'all are in a time of need right now? You may not realize it. If you ain't right now, you might be next week. So you better be taking this in. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it ain't now, it will be someday. I'm not being a prophet of doom and gloom. It, the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. In other words, you can be doing everything right or you can be doing everything wrong. There's still going to be some things happen in your life. That's the reason you need Jesus to bring you through it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. And if you got your Bibles or she's going to bring it up. Exodus chapter 14. Amen. A familiar scripture. We're going to talk about the children of Israel coming out of Egypt and stuff. But I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. It says this. Exodus 14, 9 says, The Egyptians chased after them with all the forces of Pharaoh's army. How many has felt like that this week? Yes. That you felt like that all the devil had for you, he come running after you with all his forces. Come on. All his horses and all of his chariots and all of his charioteers and his troops. Yep, Glory to God. You know, Kind of like Hampton Dumpty, ain't we? Been sitting on there and we've fallen down off the thing. We're all busted into pieces. Our life is just all shattered and before the Lord. And it feels like that all the king's men and all the king's are Nobody's going to put this thing back together. My life is just shattered. My life is just went to, sh went to all this stuff. I'm want dealing with shame and guilt. I'm dealing with all these things that have kept me back from the purposes of God. Mm -hmm. Huh? You was going to say shambles. What did I say? Well, y'all are going to have to uh, get the tape. <laughs> my spirit was saying one thing and my mouth was saying another. How many of those that stuff goes into your brain when you're a preacher? I mean, there's something locked up inside of me today that's going so quick and I'm trying to get this out. So y'all need to just pray for your preacher right now. <laughs> Amen. It, it's coming to me quicker than I can get it released to you, you know. I, I'm from... I, Hey, you got to remember, I'm from the mountains of North Carolina. I'm used to talking slower than this, okay? But I'm, everything slowed down. Yeah, 
I'm not that smart. I can't figure this out. I need the Lord to slow things down for me. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, here's your Reader's Digest version. You've been going through a bunch of junk. You need to know that something's going to happen here for the good. That there may be all kinds of things. Pharaoh's army, horses, chariots, charioteers, troops. It says the Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they stood camped beside the shore near whatever that word is, across from that other word. <laughs> Y'all laugh, you can't say it either, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just being honest about you and transparent. I can't say them words. That's where I just have to pray for interpretation. You know why? Them, them places where they were at was not important because it was not the physical location. Because you say they camped beside us and they caught up with us in Webster County or they caught up with us in Union County or they caught up in Hopkins County. It don't matter where it caught up to you. It's not about the physical place. It's about the spiritual place. Hallelujah. But have you ever seen this before? I didn't really see this before until I started looking at this this week. That... <coughs> Pharaoh called him, but he never got a hold of him. Right. It said he caught up with him. Yes. And what you're going to find down in the scriptures, they're, they're, they're facing one of the biggest challenges that they were facing since their freedom. Come on. Since they got out of Egypt, they were facing one of the biggest things because there they come. They're face to face with the Red Sea, and Pharaoh and all of his, uh, uh, all his forces is coming right behind him. They're closing in on them, and it don't look like there's no way that they can pass over into what God promised. Yep. Wow. Does that feel like you today? Yep. <laughs> that you, you're facing one of your biggest challenges you've ever faced in your life, you feel like? And it feels like everything's coming down around you, and the devil's chasing you with everything he's got right now? Good. Come on. Good. Hallelujah. When the enemy surrounds you, and the walls are closing in, when the tide is quickly rising and you wonder where he's been, friend, there's never been a moment yep. Amen. that his arms weren't reaching out so you can rest assured and be secure. God's moving right now. Hallelujah. And the people of Israel, as they stood, were camped beside the shore of them two places across from there. Look what it says in verse 10. As Pharaoh approached the people of Israel, they looked up and panicked. Yeah. Well, does that sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything closing in. You face that thing. What's our first reaction? We're going to just panic. We're going to trip out. We're going to, oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe this. Why, God? Why? What are you doing, God? Or here's the other one. Where are you at, Lord? Where are you at? Why are you doing it? Why are you allowing it? What's going on? And then we start with our resumes to God. Well, God, I've served you since a child. Glory to God. I've done this for you, God. God, I've been going to church here lately. Lord, I've even been giving in the offering. You know that's a miracle. <laughs> I've done this. I've done that for you, God. Hey, I've quit cussing as bad. Glory to God. I ain't drinking as bad. I'm not doing drugs now. I'm not doing all these things. I'm doing it. I'm trying to do everything right for you, God. And look at where it's got me. So your freedom and your liberty is determined by what you have quit or give up you think for God, right? See, that's where we missed it. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It's got to do with Him. You can't get good enough for God to bless you. We'll say it again. You can't get good enough for God to bless you. You can't get good enough to get your breakthrough. You can't get good enough to receive from God. You can't get good enough to get a miracle from God. Because then you're manipulating it. And we're bad to do it. You know, you know what we do, don't we? Oh, Lord, I'm just going to pray and fast, Lord, that you're going to move. I'm going to pray and fast. Praying and fasting is great, but you know what? Praying and fasting don't change God. It changes us. Yes. And if you're doing it to manipulate or beg God to do something for your life, all you're doing is going hungry. That's all you are. You've got to check the reality. Of why do we pray and fast? We pray and fast to submit ourselves to God. Amen? To change us. 
to get out all the things in the world that we could begin to hear what the Lord's saying. Yes. It's not about changing God's mind. You know what? God loves you in spite of you. Yep. God loves me in spite of me. God loves us whether we're doing right or whether we're doing wrong. Why? You that have children, do you love your kids whether they're doing right or wrong? Amen. Of course you do. You want to lay hands and feet both on them sometimes, but glory to God. You love them nonetheless. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've seen four or five mamas just turn around and say, you listening to this, ain't you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Lindsay's like, Dad, I don't like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's the thing. We love them in spite of ourselves. And we love our parents in spite of even when they're trying to correct us. See, that's the thing where we've missed it with God. Thank you, Lindsay. You set me up. And didn't, I didn't even know it was in there. Hallelujah. Because how many people got mad at God when God was trying to show you something? How many people didn't like what God was direction he was taking you? Because you're like, God, I don't like this. I don't like this. He said, but I've got a greater good I'm trying to work out in your life. Yeah. So are you at the place you can say, God, I trust you? Oh. That's easy. You say, oh, of course I trust God. Yeah. Do you really? Do you trust that what you're going through right now has got a greater end than what you're seeing right now? Yeah. Oh, Hallelujah. That's where the trust in God. It's hard sometimes. You wonder, why is this happening, God? Where are you at? Why all this? God's saying, you know what? I'm right here. I got this. And that was the word of the Lord. I don't know if anybody's seen on Facebook on the church page this morning. <laughs> but God is trying to shout from the mountaintops to you. Just be still. I got this. I'm not surprised at what's going on. God's not up in, on his throne going, oh, Man, I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> Whew, my bad. <laughs> God ain't doing that. <laughs> you know? But we think he is. We think, well, God, you don't see me. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what this is like. And he's like, yes, I do. Uh -huh. yes. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. Well, then that just breaks out all kinds of emotions to us. Well, I thought you loved me, God. If you knew this was going to happen, why didn't you just stop it? Y'all are quiet this morning. We're getting into something now. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Why didn't you just stop it, God, if you love me? Because sometimes we've got to learn on our own, just like your kids in the natural. Hallelujah. There's things going on right now for my adult children. Hallelujah, my and Barb's adult children. That I want to lay hands and feet on them and just say, You know better. <laughs> but you know what I'm doing? Not saying a word and saying, God, I trust you with their lives. I trust yes. you with their decisions. I trust you with their destiny. Yes. You know why? Because they've been raised in the ways and paths of righteousness. And they shall not depart from it when they grow old. I have that promise of God I can stand upon. You know yes. what? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I don't understand why they're doing some of these things sometimes. But yes. guess what? God does. Yes. And I'm saying, I trust you, Lord. Yes. Do you trust God with your very children? Do you trust God with your very life? Do you trust that God knows better than we do? See, I know that when God starts to reveal to them the purpose and destiny, what's right and what's wrong, because they know what's right and wrong, they don't need daddy or mama preaching to them all the time. Come on. But I believe the Spirit of God that's been instilled inside of them, that greater is He that's inside of my kids than He that's out here in the world. And I trust the Lord that that seed has been planted. And I pray for a bountiful harvest of the Word of God and the will of God to come together in a Kairos moment. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, guess what? The same thing happens with God. God steps back sometimes and says, you know what? You need to learn this on your own. I don't know what you need to know. But you need to know. And guess what? I've tried to show you other ways and you didn't take the lesson. So now, I'm going to allow some things because I've got to get your attention. Because your attention's been on everything else in this world but me. That's right. That's <laughs> Pharaoh approached the people and they looked up and they panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. But look what they did. Glory to God. They cried out to the Lord. <laughs> Third day's got a song out that just tears me up every time I hear it. Hallelujah. Uh, it tears me up so much that I don't even want to do the song as far as the words. At least not right now. Maybe we will for it. It's just cry out to Jesus. Yes. And hear that guy's voice on that. He goes, cry out to Jesus. It talks about everything you're going through. If you ain't heard it, go on YouTube and listen to it. <coughs> Cry out to Jesus. That's what they did. They cried out to the Lord. Look what took place next. And then it said to Moses, just like we've been saying to God, 
Because Moses was a representative of God unto them, was he not? Yeah. That's Pastor Moses said, so why did you bring us out here to die in this wilderness? Go why you brought me out in this wilderness place just to let me die. Were, weren't we better, weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? In other words, weren't we better off just being a slave? Just staying stuck in that rut that we were in? What have you done for us? Why did you make us? Next verse. Why did you make us leave Egypt? So many times, we would rather stay bound up in slavery to sin and things of that sort than to get free because we've become comfortable with our sin. We've become comfortable living the way we're living. And when we get under the anointing of God and the Spirit of God, all of a sudden the conviction of the Holy Spirit begins to transpire. And all of a sudden we're kind of like, oh, oh I don't know if I want to go back up there to that church. It's happening. It's happening all around her. Why? Because the Spirit of God is being turned up like never before. Oh, you felt the Holy Spirit at times. You had them little goosey bumps on the back of your neck, them Holy Ghost bumps, and you felt good about yourself. But now all of a sudden, God's turning up the fire of God. Why? Because God wants to purify us. And the fire of God begins to purify us. And it begins to get your motives and your mindsets on Him rather than on everything else. Glory to God. For we cried out and said, God, I want the fire of God. And we, we come through a fire tunnel on Monday night. And fire, fire, fire. And you wonder about that. And you say, say what's going on? And I say, God is pouring out his fire on this land for those that receive it. And it will either purify you or it will destroy you. I'm going to give you a testimony. You don't want to, if you think that's not important. We did that fire tunnel. Went and done, you know, we just started back doing some of these. Pastor Roy on uh, uh, Monday night, he looked at me and he goes, this okay? I said, oh yeah, this is good. I said, our folks is ready for this. It was all y'all's folks, <laughs> all his folks and stuff. It's like, we ain't seen that in a long time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God, a fire time. Let me just let you take place. We got a phone call this week from my father crying. Yep. And his wife couldn't even talk. The mama was in the background <clears throat> weeping, thanking Jesus for that fire tunnel. <laughs> Because at the moment that that mama was walking through this fire tunnel and holy, Lord, holy joy and laughter hit on her yeah. and people were having to hold her up for the power of God, at that same moment, halfway around the world, her son's in the service. He's an army. Glory to God. He took three bullets to the chest at the very moment she was walking through the fire tunnel. And God saved him. His breastplate stopped out three bullets. Glory to God. The person on his right hand side, bless his heart, died. The person on his left side got seriously wounded. But he stood back up and fought them off because it stopped the bullets Amen. over his heart. And they started doing the time frame. And it was right when his mama, glory to God, was getting blessed as she walked through this fire tunnel and began to pray. How many is thankful for a mama's prayers? Come on. And that was Jessica Utley, if you want to know who it was. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Levi took three shots to the chest. God stopped the bullets. Everybody else had armor on. It didn't stop, but it stopped the three, three in the chest. Come on. That's, right. That's how powerful God is. When God's hand upon you and you have a purpose and you have a destiny of God, He don't even know what His purpose is yet. He don't even know the destiny of God upon His life. And I wish His mama, she's having to work today, glory to God, wish she could hear this. But I'm here to tell you, Levi Utley's got a purpose of God upon his eye. He's got a gift of God upon his eye. He's got a purpose and a plan and a destiny in God. And the devil can't steal it. Amen. And you need to realize that God's got a purpose for your life. And he's got a plan for your life. And you may not have took three bullets to the chest, or your kids may not. But to how many times could you have said, I should have been dead. It should have happened this way. Should have happened that way. But yet God steadied it. Hallelujah. Amen. We can't be so caught up that we're still okay with living in bondage. Okay with living as a slave. Okay living in our spiritual Egypts. It's time to get free. It's time to come loose. Hallelujah. Look at this next verse, what he says. Anybody learn anything right now? Yeah. Says, didn't we tell you this would happen? While we were still in Egypt, 
Now, how many people does that sound familiar to you? We become like Job. Job said, the thing I feared the most has come upon me. And we walk this walk of fear in our life. And we said, oh, I worried about this. And you hear about mamas and grandmas and grandpas and, and dads and stuff. They worry about this, worry about that, worry about that. Because we, don't, we say we give it over to the Lord, but yet we pick it back up and we don't trust Him. Yes. And Job said, the thing I feared the most come upon me. Here's what the Egyptians were saying. Hey, Moses, didn't we tell you this is going to happen? As soon as Pharaoh says we can go, we're gonna go he's going to change, change his mind and come back and get us. And then we're going to be worse off. We told you it's going to happen. I told you so. Have you ever met them people that when things ain't going right in your life, there's always those naysayers that want to come up and point their finger and say, I told you so. Oh, I knew this was going to happen. Oh, yeah, I knew about this. Glory to God. You, didn't, <laughs> you should have come and talked to me because I already knew. Well, if you already knew, why wouldn't you pray? <laughs> didn't we tell you this was going to happen when we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves in Egypt to the Egyptians. It's better for us to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. It's better for us to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. Is it? Do you want to live in bondage all your life? Do you want to live in fear all your life? Do you want to live with struggle after struggle after struggle? Or are you willing to take a chance on God this morning and say, You know what, God? I'd rather die listening to what you said and where you're leading me. I'd rather die in the wilderness. I'd rather die trying to live for God than I would to hang on to the familiar, hang on to the things that I've been accustomed to, to hang on to my sin, to hang on to this lifestyle. Better that I die in the wilderness than stay a slave in Egypt. Amen. Amen.